Hey, Billy from Permit Pastures Farm. Gotta love a harvest video, and that's exactly what we're gonna do right here in this bed. It's gonna be sweet potatoes, and we got a couple of other little hidden things in here. All right, before we get into it though, remember November 4th, we're gonna have a chicken processing class with Renewed Homestead. The details are gonna be down below, but also another great announcement for anybody that buys anything in terms of comfrey, we're gonna throw in a comfrey crown. It's getting that time of year where we're not gonna be able to harvest too much longer, so get it while you can. Right here are sweet potatoes. There are many like it, but these are mine. And we got slips in here. Let me tell you what else is in here. Uh, Michelle loves horseradish. Maybe a little too much. Well, you can see that popping up in here. And oh my goodness, heavens to Murgatroyd. Look what we got over here. That is a black locust growing right up out of the middle of my growing medium here. And I almost got stabbed by another one here. Okay, we'll deal with those in a minute. We got a little more horseradish down in there. We haven't yet top dressed this with any of that high ball and comfrey we have. So it's really not the best in the world, but we ended up adding comfrey extract. I'm sorry, compost extract to it as we went along. Was it a little too late? I guess we're all going to find out together. So once again, if you're doing anything sweet potato, go get that manual from Danny down at Deep South Homestead. You can get it at their Etsy store. It's basically the guide to how we did everything here. So be sure to get that out. Like every other harvest, y'all, nothing goes to waste. Either we eat it, remember, that third ethic in permaculture, abundance given to the previous two. And the first two are earth care, people care, and abundance given to the previous two. So in this case, sweet potatoes, like everything else we do around here, everything we do is in accordance with those ethics. That is the best way to define permaculture to me. And also the prime directive, which we've talked about. So these slips that you've got, you see up here, all this, well, you could eat them, but I wanna share the harvest and that's important to us. So I'm just gonna kind of start and roll these back a little bit and I'm gonna see what pops up out of here. Well, maybe nothing right off and that ain't looking awesome. So we'll just see what happens. I'm just gonna kind of pull these back. Stay tuned because you might find it really interesting what we find out. William, why don't you get on that other end and we'll roll this back together. He'll get that side. And, uh, you know, I was hoping, well, this ground ain't real soft. I was hoping that maybe some of these sweet potatoes would come up along with it. Some of them are, most of them aren't. Okay, we'll roll this up. Okay, that's one little batch. We'll go ahead and get the rest. You take that and I'll cut your leaf. All right, we got those slips and we had a couple of them come up, a couple of sweet potatoes. Well, a few of them, nothing to write home about. But down to the rice knife issue. Now, you can sit here and lose your mind over these black locusts and say, oh my goodness, sometimes you can yank them right out. And that's cool. And I can literally cut this. And if I wanted right now, I could take this this is, that's why I'm saying the problem is the solution. I can literally take this and plant it somewhere in my food forest or my orchard. So it's a problem here, but it's a solution somewhere else. You dig? Right now, I'm just gonna put it off to the side. Let's see how this other one comes up. I wanna avoid stepping in there if I can. Let's see if it comes up. Well, this isn't one you're gonna be able to plant, but that's fine too. Now we got all these uh, horseradish leaves. And once again, we're just gonna use the rice knife. You need one, we sell them at the website. One of our most useful tools around here gets it done quick. When we go back with our potato fork, we're gonna get all that up. Now, I'm just gonna kind of partner up with William here and let's just see what we got. Okay, that's a wrap on that part of it. Um, as we were going through here, I got a vole. I actually uh, stabbed him with that doggone fork. And um, anyway, we got a couple of them that got some vole issues, as you can tell. So we're gonna deal with that. Uh, the cat 
is doing her job, but maybe might need a little bit of help. And we're gonna put some bone sauce on here to see if that does a difference because it did make a difference down there when we put it on the, we noticed, and like I said, this isn't science, but we did notice that all the trees that we put bone sauce on had no vole pressure whatsoever. But the ones which were the nitrogen fixtures that didn't have it, well, those were the ones that had a problem. Is it science yet? I don't know. Anyway, I'm gonna put some of that on here and see if that makes a difference. And we're gonna put this to bed for the winter, which is basically gonna consist of putting about a foot of unsprayed straw on here, and then we'll hit it with compost deck. Actually, we'll top, top dress it with some of our ball and compost down there, and then put a bunch of straw on it for the winter. Uh, a little too late to do anything. So let's take stock of what we got here. We got those leaves that are gonna feed the compost pile back there. All of this, I'm gonna go down and show you who's gonna eat it because it might, you might find it interesting. Like I said, you could eat it, but we got other animals that would love to eat it. Chickens for sure. But we're gonna try the sheep, see if they like it. But I already know the answer. In here, we got two buckets. It's respectable. I mean, it's not, there's some of these that we won't eat. But once again, they will go, if you got pigs or something like that, or even chickens or even compost pile, you can put those there. So nothing absolutely goes to waste. Nothing ever has to hit your dumpster, folks. That's the beauty of doing this. All right, so we'll get these ready, get them squared away for us, probably can them. We canned quite a few last year, but we only did one bed of sweet potatoes. Um, here lately, we hadn't been eating a whole lot of, you know, starchy carb carbs or anything like that. So we'll go ahead and put these up and then we'll take it down and go show you what we do with these. Well, here we are. Um, once again, everybody gets a piece. And when we come back later on, I can guarantee you this will not be here. They're a little spooked right now because I'm here, but honestly, this is how you do it. Earth care, people care, and the, um, the leftovers given to the previous two. And it really works that way. So these guys, okay, notwithstanding what's going on over there, it's about that season. But the point being in all of this, is that nothing goes to waste. Absolutely nothing on a permaculture farm. And it's not that difficult to do, ain't that right, little boy? So consider, okay, we didn't get the best harvest in the world, and that's fine. So you make adjustments, you keep what you got, and you start over again, you do better next time. You make adjustments. But don't let that be the impetus to keep you from even trying, because that's what it does for a lot of people. Maybe it doesn't go out perfectly the way you want, but then other times it does. So just keep that in mind. Okay, before we leave, as far, as far as making things go out the way you want them to, consider the training that's coming up on November 4th. Like I said, it's going to be a really good class. Ben and Denise's renewed homestead. And don't forget also, anybody that buys any comfrey from now till the end of the month, you're gonna, go, you're gonna get a crown on top of it. All right, y'all, thank you so much. Till next time, stay alert, stay alive. We'll see you.